Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the February 27th, 2017 legislative session. Before we begin, I would ask all of you to please silence any electronic devices. And also, should an emergency arise during the meeting, please exit the room, make a right-hand turn, and go down the stairs. Should that exit be blocked for some reason, please make a left and a right and go down the stairs. Should you need assistance, please let us know and we'll provide it to you. Please do not use the elevators in case of an emergency. At this time, I'd uh, like to invite Jeff Connors, who will uh, give the invocation. Reverend James Riley was of Nelson Memorial United Methodist Church, could not make it tonight, and he asked Jeff to cover for him, so welcome, Jeff. Thank you. Um, as you just stated, I'm from Nelson's United Methodist Church. I'm a certified lay minister there and the lay leader. So I'm kind of Pastor Jim's right-hand man, the go-to guy. I would like to take this opportunity to read a short piece of scripture. And it will kind of make sense when I begin my prayer. It's from Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 through 40. And the, Jesus is being interviewed by the Pharisees. This is administrative council, you know, in the uh, Jewish faith. And they're trying to trap Jesus. They're asking him trick questions. So they're trying to find a reason that they can take him and get rid of him. He's a thorn in their side. And they say, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. <clears throat> This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. It says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So here we have heart, mind, and soul. And we like to talk about those in the Methodist face of being representative of the body, the spirit, and the mind. And so I say, Almighty and gracious God, you are the king of all kings and the one deserving of all honor and praise. We humbly invite you into these proceedings. We ask you to allow the business of the city to be conducted with wisdom, intellect, and prudence. The people on the council have demonstrated their willingness to serve for the greater good of the people, touch their hearts to complete their duties with compassion and care. As the soul of the town, let them be reflective of the dignity and grace of themselves and the Salisbury and people they serve. I ask this in the holy name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jeff. Please rise and join, join me now in the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, we have a presentation. Yep. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and uh, fellow citizens, um, it, uh, it's an honor to be up here this evening. Um, but I'd like to uh, welcome someone here um, first, and um, I, I don't know if he wants me to do this, but I'm going to mention that um, the former Adjutant General of the State of Maryland, Major General Jim Adkins, who is also a Salisbury resident, proud Salisbury resident, is in the room, um, and I uh, was, uh, had the privilege of serving under his command and under his leadership. So, General, thank you for being here this evening. Um, and, and that brings us to the, uh, the reason that, that he's in this room and that I'm up here. Um, we are uh, proud tonight to honor one of our own. And uh, when I say one of our own, a, a city employee um, who has uh, demonstrated his uh, intellect, his um, 
uh, capability in so many different forums, and we are all so proud of him. And um, the person I'm talking about is um, an intern in the mayor's office. So I'm going to read a, a proclamation here, and then I'm going to ask him to come up and join me. Um, and by the look, I'm not sure he knew this was happening. Um, <laughs> But uh, so, so whereas the Daughters of the American Revolution, founded in 1890 and headquartered in Washington, D.C., is a nonprofit, non political <laughs> volunteer women's service organization dedicated to promoting patriotism, preserving American history, and securing America's future through better education for children. And Salisbury's Samuel Chase chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution, founded in 1933, participates annually in the DAR Good Citizen Award and Scholarship Contest Program whereby each state board of education accredited high school is eligible to submit one senior selected by teachers and peers to receive the award, and that senior is then invited by the DAR to participate in the scholarship portion of the program. And the Good Citizen Award recognizes individuals who demonstrate good citizenship qualities of dependability, service, leadership, and patriotism in their homes, schools, and communities. And the scholarship contest is extended to award recipients by DAR invitation only, and then judged and awarded based on review of a student's personal statement and essay submission. And Salisbury Christian School, Christian schools, Nathaniel Nate Lucas Sansom, whose class rank in November 2016 was number eight in his class, was selected to receive the award based on his well-rounded commitment to school and community, as reflected in his academic achievements, which have landed him on the honor roll and seen him inducted into the National Honor Societies, his participation in extracurricular at school, athletic, theatrical, and student government activities, his 500 plus volunteer service hours, which include hours spent, yes, as uh, an intern in the Salisbury Mayor's office, because we don't pay very well to our <laughs> interns, but we do try to take care of you, Nate, right? Um, a docent at the Salisbury Zoo, a group activities leader at Lakeside Assisted Living Facility as well. Nate Sansom is one of six area high school seniors to be recognized and awarded the prestigious DAR Good Citizen Award and scholarship at the February 3rd, 2017 meeting of the Samuel Chase chapter, where students read their essays on this year's theme, Our American Heritage and Our Responsibility for Preserving It, with a focus on how do the combined actions of many good citizens keep our nation moving forward? And I think that's a, uh, a question and a statement that we all need to keep near and dear to our hearts. So now, therefore, I, Jacob R. Day, Mayor of the City of Salisbury, do hereby proclaim February 27th, Nate Sansom Day, from this day forward in the City of Salisbury. So, Nate, would you come up here? Yeah, of course, absolutely. So, uh, Nate, come up here. Absolutely. So I want to just say that, that we are recognizing this day in our city in celebration of your designation as a 2017 DAR Good Citizen. And I, I bestow this on you uh, with the power invested in me by the city of Salisbury and citizens of Salisbury and on behalf of the city council, our fine five members of the city council who are here with us tonight. I also want to uh, acknowledge uh, Mary Ann Adkins and Martha Roberts who are here in the room tonight from uh, the Daughters of the American Revolution Samuel Chase chapter. So thank you ladies for your presence, appreciate it. Um, and I also want to add, if I may, that uh, we'd like for you to read your, your essay to us. Would you be willing to do that? Uh, absolutely. Okay, and then we're gonna get some more pictures. All right. Our American heritage and our responsibility for preserving it. And once again, as the mayor stated, the question was how do the combined actions of many good citizens keep our nation moving forward? Even before we were nationalized as the United States of America, the combined actions of many good citizens have kept America moving forward since 1776 when American colonists declared their independence from Great Britain. It is only through the unified effort of those who came before us that we are able to enjoy the many freedoms and liberties that are taken for granted as the foundation of the American dream. Throughout the history of our nation, change has taken place through the unified efforts of individual American citizens coming together fighting for a cause, and acting as an impetus for change. From the monumental women's suffrage movement in the 1920s to the instrumental Civil <coughs> Rights Act of 1964, the combined actions of American citizens have set the tone for change and have embodied what it means to be an American. The women's suffrage movement that took place in the 1920s marked a monumental moment in American history as ordinary American citizens came together to move our nation forward by promoting gender equality in the electoral process. 
In order for a nation to move forward, change must first be initiated. In the case of the women's suffrage movement, this change was put in motion through events such as the Seneca Falls Convention, in which citizens came together determined to forge a new path forward for women in America. Although some involved in the movement were fined for resorting to peaceful protest and civil disobedience, the spirit of these Americans was not deterred and their voices could not be silenced. In response to the demand for equality, the 19th Amendment was passed by Congress and ratified by the states. It was through the passage of this amendment that female American citizens were allowed their right to be heard, their right to vote. Another instrumental movement that swept across the nation in the 1950s and 60s was the Civil Rights Movement, which resulted in the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. During this time, our nation was divided by race and separated by superficial differences that created an innate bias and disdain within the hearts of many, white and black alike. The American people were at a crossroad in need of reform and a change of heart. The woman who stepped forward to achieve this change was Rosa Parks as she took the initiative by demanding racial equality as she refused to give up her seat on a bus in Montgomery, Alabama. Soon thereafter, men, women, and children from every corner of this great nation came together promoting actions to demand equality and the fair treatment of all American citizens. Instead of focusing on what divided us, change makers such as Parks and Martin Luther King Jr. decided to focus on, focus on what brought us together and united us as an American people. As a result of the demand for equality and justice, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed. This milestone of American history made racial discrimination illegal and mandated the fair and equal treatment of all people in public establishments, including restaurants, hotels, and schools. Through the course of American history, there are many examples of ordinary citizens uniting together to defy odds, overcome adversity, and redefines what it means to be an American. Wow. Can I get one picture with, uh, with Nate and then? And um, I, I think it's also important that we recognize that Nate's parents are in the room. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Nate, can we get a picture with the city council? Can you get a picture with them? Do you mind? Yeah, you want to go around back? Do you want to? Parents? Yeah. Oh, Martha. yeah, absolutely. And Mr. President, if I can, while we're recognizing the incredible young people in the room, um, I think it's important that we recognize that we have a, a guest from the Boy Scouts with us. Um, Wayne Compton, who is a Star Scout, is in the room, and he is uh, uh, s surrounded by his loving grandparents, uh, Stacy and Mike Wisner. Um, so uh, Wayne, just a word of encouragement. Keep going beyond Star Scout. I stopped there. Keep going to Eagle Man. You got this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Good luck to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to adopt the legislative agenda as presented. So moved. Ms. Jackson, Mr. Ireton. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. 
Second. Mr. Boda. Ms. Jackson. Good evening, Ms. Nichols. Good evening. How are you? Fine, thank you. Great essay, Nate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, wow. Uh, on the consent agenda tonight, we have the February 6th work session minutes, February 13th regular meeting minutes, resolution number 2727, authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the Department of Justice for the purpose of expending grant funds in the amount of $250,000. Resolution number 2728, authorizing the mayor to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Life Crisis Center and Telemon Corporation for the purpose of applying for Office of Violence Against Women's FY 2017 Transitional Housing Assistance Grants for Victims of Sexual Assault, Domestic Violence, Dating Violence, and Stalking. Resolution number 2729, authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the Wacomico County to expend grant funds for public security cameras. Resolution number 2730, authorizing the mayor to enter into a memorandum understanding with certain parties to apply for DOJ's FY17 Adult Drug Court Grant Program. Resolution number 2731, accepting grant funds awarded through the Maryland Department of Natural Resources from the Waterway Improvement Grant Fund in the amount of $10,000 for improvements to the Port of Salisbury Marina. And resolution number 2732, authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore for the purpose of expending grant funds in the amount of $8,500. And that concludes the consent agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I now call the motion. All those in favor of the approval of the consent agenda, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you, Ms. Nichols. Thank you. I will entertain a motion to approve the award of bids. So moved. Second. Ms. Jackson. Mr. Boda. Good evening, Mrs. Miller. How are you? Good. I'm great. Thank you. There are just two items this evening. Both are uh, requests for declaration of surplus. The first is from the Salisbury Police Department. The Procurement Division received a request from the Police Department to declare 66 bi bicycles surplus. All items were found, forfeited, or unclaimed, and attempts to return items to known owners have been unsuccessful. It's the request of the Police Department that items are either sold at auction or donated locally. And I did include a list of those bicycles in your packet. We request council's approval to declare the items noted as surplus and to allow the police department to dispose of them as requested. Okay. Question? Just one thing I'd add for council to consider, um, and, and I'm not sure we need to do anything tonight, but. Um, given that we have the wheelhouse mm -hmm. in our community gonna, now, yeah, that, that, be that might be the best place for all of our bicycles yep. to go. And so instead gonna, of even including the language about sale, we might want to just take that out yeah. in the future and we can just say donation Donate. and in, intend to send them there. Yeah. 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 I, I guess I would also add as a public service announcement is uh, when you buy a bike, register it with the Salisbury Police Department. They, uh, they track the serial numbers. If the bike's found, they can quickly get it back to you. Uh, and uh, so that's just something to think about for everybody to do when you give bikes or buy bikes. I think that's an excellent idea, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, it is. It and, is. And good point. Okay. Regarding registration. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the other declaration of surpluses request is also from the police department. The procurement division received a request from the police department to declare one vehicle a surplus. It's vehicle number 52, which is a 1987 Ford Econoline uh, van. It's just surpassed its useful life. It's not drivable, and the interior electronic equipment is outdated and of little to no value. The police department recommends that the vehicle will be towed to Salisbury Scrap Metal for destruction, which will be witnessed by Pat Geyer, it's the quartermaster for the police department. The city of Salisbury will be paid for the value of the scrap metal. Procurement Department requests Council's approval to declare the item surplus and to allow the PD to dispose of it as requested. Any questions? Hearing none, I'll now call the motion. All those in favor to approve the award of bids, please 
signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The chair votes aye. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Miller. I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution number 2733. So moved. Second. Mr. Boda, Mr. Ireton. Good evening. Good evening. Before you, resolution 2733, a resolution of the City of Salisbury, Maryland, revising employee health benefits upon retirement from currently required 10 years of employment to 20 years of employment for eligibility and limiting the city's contribution for all employees who retire on or after September 1, 2017 to no more than a maximum benefit amount. Whereas the City of Salisbury currently pays 50% of the health insurance premium for employees and their dependents upon retirement, when they have worked for the city for a minimum of, t of 10 years. And whereas the benefit is currently described in the city's employee handbook in section 0402C entitled health insurance benefits upon retirement. And whereas the city has determined that it is necessary to revise the benefits for employees hired on or after September 1, 2017, and for employees who retire on or after September 1, 2017, in order to make the program economically sustainable. And whereas the revised benefits are described in an updated employee handbook, section 0402C, uh, see attached, and whereas the employees hired prior to September 1, 2017 must have worked for the city for a minimum of 10 years to, to be eligible to participate in the city's health insurance program following retirement. And whereas the city has determined that it is necessary for employees who are hired on or after September 1, 2017 must have worked for the city for a minimum of 20 years to be eligible to participate in the city's health insurance program following retirement. And whereas the city has determined that for all employees who retire on or after September 1, 2017, the city will pay 50% of the retiree's health insurance premium for the, the retiree and for dependent, dependents not to exceed the maximum benefit amount. Questions? <laughs> Hearing none, I'll call the motion. All those in favor of resolution number 2733, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution number 2734. So moved. Second. Mr. Rudisil. Ms. Jackson. Resolution number 2734, a resolution of the City of Salisbury, Maryland, establishing a moratorium for building permit fees, plan review fees, plumbing permit fees, mechanical permit fees, capacity fees, and central line fees for single family owner occupied detached dwellings. Whereas the mayor of the City of Salisbury and the City Council desire to establish an infill, infill building lot incentive program in designated areas throughout the city to encourage single family home ownership and enhance the economic welfare of the community as a whole. And whereas the City of Salisbury Department of Building Permitting and Inspections requires a plan review, building permit, plumbing permit, and mechanical permit as required by the International Building Code 2015 edition, and also pay plan review, building permit, plumbing permit, and mechanical fees to be paid in connection with the construction of a new single family dwelling. And whereas the City of Salisbury Department of Public Works requires capacity fees, water and sewer tap fees, and central line fees to be paid for the construction of a new single family detached dwelling. And whereas for public safety and the general welfare, welfare and protection of the public, construction of single family detached dwellings is performed by quality persons uh, with appropriate permits and inspections for the work performed. And whereas the mayor has recommended that the city approve a moratorium of fees as set forth in this resolution, and whereas the comprehensive connection charge tied to the city's water and sewer system consists of four specific fees, which are capacity fee, facility fee, line fee, and sewer connection, and water and meter tap fee. Whereas section 13020709 a allows the mayor and council to adopt a separate resolution uh, discounts for the comprehensive connection charge to encourage water and sewer usage that is consistent with the city's goals. And whereas city policy requires the approval of city council in order to waive any fee that is associated with the project not being performed directly by the city. Questions? What way will we advertise that the reduction is available? Is there any, or is that just something that spreads like wildfire? <laughs> no, no, it's a good question. Um, because, you know, addressing your earlier questions about ensuring that um, single lots in older neighborhoods are receive attention as well as, you know, some of the larger parcels that are annexed, um, I think we've got to think about that. Um, 
you know, working directly probably with our neighborhood associations and homeowners yeah, right. associations yeah. is one way. Um, so that, I mean, because they know better than I think even the city government what is available in a particular neighborhood. Um, but um, as far as industry and, and trade, maybe we can work with, uh, I know Coastal Association of Realtors is obviously represented here to get the word out broadly, but I think there's, there's probably more we can do that internally to advertise that. Um, if you'd like, what we can do is mock something up um, for distribution to HOAs and neighborhood associations and send that out. Is there, that's great. Is there any way that we could be updated <clears throat> on a monthly basis as to who's taking advantage yes. of, the, uh, of, the, of the incentive or how, whatever mm -hmm. we want to call it? Um, so how about every single, I, you know, I would even say that when we get the, um, the monthly housing numbers for the city, right. um, at the same time, we could send out just an update on how many times it's been used, how many single family uh, building applications yeah. we've had. Um, and then the only other question I have is with the building cycle, and there's probably representatives here who can talk to us. With the building cycle, is this, does this one year right now, is that, a, is that a good time or does it need to be in a pipeline? I'm just wondering about cold and time when, of year. Yeah, time of year. Is this a good one? I'll admit, you know, I'm looking at Bill and uh, Mr. Gladden, and um, I don't know. Um, I'll admit, a year was kind of our first, right. our first guess. And um, Mr. Holland, you want to come up and address that, or? <coughs> if twelve months from today, is that a good you know, test of? I would say this is a good time to start uh, beginning of spring and. Um, this is the time of year where the construction industry starts to um, pick up. What's the, um, the time frame on when somebody comes in and how quickly we can hmm. get, I'm not saying how quickly can we get them out, but what's the, what's the yeah. average time frame of how long it Good takes? Question. Hold on, I can pull up what it was <laughs> at a, as of uh, 10 o'clock this morning. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull it up. Metrics. Isn't this one of his uh, metrics? That's one of his <laughs> metrics. It is. So I love let, metrics. Let me do this if I can. Uh, six days for a plan review. Aver is average plan review in, uh, for a building permit. And it's still have to go to public works? Uh, not, as, not, not for a uh, no. single family lot, no. I guess, is this, is this something also that uh, we could, in a year, if we decide to take another look at it, after a year or at some point and then say, you know, we may want to extend it. I, I don't know if that's something we want to think about in a year, but is that something that we can just do a resolution to extend it? Is that a possibility as well? Yeah, I, I think um, that was that was our intention so that we could see what the progress is like and see if it needs to be either tweaked or renewed or removed. Um, and, you know, giving it a year, I think we, we have that power and, you know, the, the council can certainly yeah. make that decision at that time, and and we'll you know we'll work to share the information, and we can all base our, our judgment off of what we think success should look like. Um, you know, knowing that we had nine in the past year, nine single family homes in the past year. Hopefully, we'll see more than that as a result of this. Uh, but I don't I, I don't know what our our each of our metric of success would be. Um, but let's I think look at it in a year and see where we're yeah. at and how we feel about it. Yeah, actual numbers <laughs> would be good. Percentages won't mean much. When you only had when you're nine. talking about starting with nine. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, I've noticed that there is already construction happening on the eastern side of Beagland Park in the Idolot area. I don't know if it's incidental or it has to deal with this. And I wonder, because it's for uh, detached dwellings, but there's townhomes there on the western side of Beagland that's right. that also stalled. And then there's Parsons Lake that, that's also stalled <coughs> out. And I wonder if we could do something, you know, analogous to this for, for townhomes. Uh, Mr. Gladden, you want to speak to the um, construction that's ongoing? Yeah. And then I think we can talk. Good evening. I apologize for my hair. I've had a hat on all day. It's been a, well, it's been a Monday. Uh, so the... Uh, what you're mentioning, uh, the road is going in on the other side of, I believe it's Twin Creeks, uh, Twin Creeks Drive, um, 
it's going to be another 15. Uh, that has nothing to do with the townhouses. Uh, uh -huh. It's all part of that same parcel, I believe. Is that, is that right? On that side of the road, that's all single family where you're going to be. Right, and there's uh, there's single family mixed use going to be on the uh, if you're heading north, I guess on, on our on the left hand side. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question or not, but it uh, but but the roads going in should be done early summer. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, that, that's our projection. So we have um, eight hundred. Just looking at property types, there are eight hundred and fifty two townhouses in the city. Um, 6,900, you know, 6,944 single family units. So I, I think, um, there's probably a lot of room in the townhouse market. I, I don't, I don't know much about it. Um, I don't know how it's categorized from a, uh, realtor standpoint, but I think it's, you know, something we can certainly think about. It's re it's really kind of about, do, do we feel like that market needs, you know, some help like the single family detached market did? Mm -hmm. I mean, at, reasonable, some, point, reasonable at question. some point, somebody thought that there was an opportunity there and something happened. I don't know what. Well, I do know what. And it's... The <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 2009 happened. Yeah, and right, it right. Stopped. Yeah. right. And I, I would just like to see anything we could do to get those communities completed because mm -hmm. there are people that purchased into those communities and it would help their property values and it will help uh, us make full use of all that infrastructure that's going in there. And, and I'll defer to the council president because I wasn't sitting on the planning commission when it came forward, but the new plan that was approved by the planning commission, that included townhomes, yes. right? Yes, it did. So, yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing something. Right. Yeah. I appreciate it. I want to thank um, Ms. Rain uh, from the Coastal. She's mm -hmm. uh, made herself available today to start looking at some of the older neighborhoods and also to Mr. Lennox in thinking about this over the past couple of weeks. I couldn't possibly have been part of drawing the line in the comprehensive plan and then not be for this. So that was, uh, I remember being in the room when we threw the maps out and they handed us the markers and said, where do you want this to happen? <laughs> and uh, on all of that is ready, especially out where Mr. Glad is doing his, but we'll work very hard inside, uh, inside our older neighborhoods to try and make sure that the incentive is, uh, is used. Yeah. yeah, I think we can, our goal should accomplish both for sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll call the motion. All those in favor of resolution number 2734, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The chair votes aye. I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution number 2735. So moved. Second. Mr. Boda, Mr. Ireton. Resolution number 2735, a resolution of the City of Salisbury proposing to amend and clarify certain terms of the annexation agreement associated with property that was subject to the 2007 Dagsboro Road Faith Baptist Church annexation. Whereas Faith Baptist Church of Salisbury, Maryland, incorporated together with the previously designated developer Vernon L. Esham, entered into an annexation agreement with the City of Salisbury on February 5th, 2007, and whereas Said agreement included a concept development plan detailing certain resi residential uses intended for the property and the development considerations associated with the anticipated residential development. And whereas conditions beyond the control of the owner have rendered the residential development of this property financially unviable in the recent past and present time. And whereas the owner has required that the allowed use under the terms of the above reference annexation agreement be expanded to include a solar farm as defined under the zoning code and that certain development considerations be clarified to confirm their requirement is applicable, applicable to residential development. Now therefore be it resolved, uh, never mind. Do I have to read that, Kim? <laughs> yeah, to announce the public. Hearing. Okay. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of Salisbury that the concept development plan referenced in the subject annexation agreement be amended to include a solar farm as acceptable use subject to the terms and conditions of the zoning code and be it further resolved by the City Council that all previously agreed terms and considerations, including roadway, utility, construction, development, assessments per dwelling unit remain as a requirement for future residential construction, and be it further resolved that the City of Salisbury and the Council hold a public hearing on the annexation held upon, uh, proposed on April 10th, 2007, 17, at 6 o'clock in Council Chambers at the City County Office Building, and the City Administrator shall cause a public notice of time and place to of said hearing to be published not fewer than four days, uh, four times, not less than weekly intervals in at least 
one newspaper of general circulation in the city of Salisbury, which said notice shall spe specify time and place at which the city council will hold a public hearing on the resolution, which date shall be no sooner than 15 days after the final required date of publication specified above. Questions, comments? <laughs> Seems like we've been on this church thing before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can drop fees in a couple of weeks. Is there? Yeah. Mr. Lennox? Is a lot of there any system. way that, the, that anybody who wants to change could somehow get a shorter? I mean, it's been months. I think what a lot of it has to do with Maryland law. I think that that's that the, Well, the first change, it's been two things that have happened. The first change was actually creating this as a use that right. could be done in this district, sure. which previously it wasn't. So that was done first. And now the agreement that was entered into years ago only provided for the residential development of this property. And we're now amending the agreement under state law to allow this use as well which is now also a permitted use within this zoning district. So it makes sense, but this is, it's, and it's unfortunate that state law requires that it be advertised for a month, but the point is that um, in the event that me a member of the public wanted to oppose these changes, they would have the right to do that under state law. Any other questions? All right, hearing none, I'll call the motion. All those in favor? of resolution number 2735, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you, Ms. Clance. You're welcome. I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2416 for the second reading. So moved. Mr. Boda. Second. Ms. Jackson. Good evening, Mr. Tillman. Good evening. Okay, this is an ordinance of the City of Salisbury approving an amendment of the FY 2017 general fund budget to appropriate funding um, to appropriate funding for the Salisbury Youth Civics Council um, SYCC scholarships, whereas the city annually awards two $300 scholarships to outstanding participants of the SYCC, and whereas these awards were funded through a grant for, through the first year, and whereas the city uh, funded these awards for fiscal year 2016 and 17 and whereas these funds must be placed in a non-lapsing account within the general fund and whereas the grant fund does not have the necessary appropriation order to create such an account and whereas the city of Salisbury's budgetary laws do not allow the city to transfer appropriations between separate funds without approval of the city council and whereas the city's FY 2017 budget does hereby include an appropriation to fund the necessary transfer there now for be it ordained by the city council of the city of Salisbury, Maryland that the city's fiscal year 2017 general fund budget be and hereby is amended as follows, decreasing account 12500-569237 by 600, increasing the use of surplus by 275, and increasing the transfer grant fund by $875. Any questions? Hearing none, I'll call the motion. All those in favor of ordinance number 2416, Please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 2417 for the first reading. So moved. Second. Mr. Mr. Bowden, Mr. Ireton. Thank you. This is an ordinance of the City of Salisbury approving an amendment of the FY 2017 general fund budget to appropriate funding for additional fire department personnel and promotions. Whereas the fire department has a need for an additional four firefighter emergency medical technicians, and whereas the fire department has a need to add two captains to its current allocation, and whereas there are insufficient funds available in the FY 2017 fire department budget to fund, the additional four positions now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Salisbury, Maryland that the City's fiscal year 2017 general fund budget be and hereby is amended as follows. Number one, increase current surplus available count 01000-469810 by $116,422.16 and increase the fire department budget by an equivalent amount. Any questions? Hearing none, I'll, I'll call the motion. All those in favor of ordinance number 2417, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you, Mr. Tillman. Thank you. Ms. Nichols, do we have any public comments requests? No. Okay. Hearing none, congratulations, Nate, by the way. I will say one thing. 
I have never seen him without a smile on his face. And it's so refreshing to walk down the halls when you're feeling not so good, and you look at him and you feel good. So thank you, Nate, for doing that. That's true. All right. No other business? We are adjourned. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Yes. Okay, let me try this. I'm trying.